Hello, I'm Peter Capaldi from Doctor Who, and you are watching Supernova TV. Well, I'm here with the tallest person that I've ever met. Uh, now, what, what's your name, man? Terry. Terry the Space Marine. That's possibly the greatest thing ever. Now, Terry, tell us a little bit about making this costume. It is gigantic. Thank you. Well, it's my very first costume. I've never made anything like this before. Are you kidding me? No, this, is, this is how you start? This is how I started. Uh, January the 2nd, I think, was the start date. And, um, yeah, it took me about three months to build this one. But then I built a second one, which is wandering around here as well, um, in three weeks. And a Sister of Battle, which you would have seen yesterday. And how long does it, like, what, what's it all made out of? It's made out of EVA foam. So the whole suit actually weighs about um, 25 kilos total. And most of the weight's in the, in the stilts down the bottom. The thing that I really am impressed by is the fact that the, the dimensions, like the proportions feel right. Well, this is one of the things I saw online was uh, so many photos of Space Marines with the T-Rex arms syndrome. Yeah. So they're like, oh my God, you know, big shoulders, little baby arms. And I thought, no, no, no. <laughs> So um, I did some measurements and about, uh, oh, I say added about five inches. And um, so the hand's actually fake. So I'm holding a, uh, a handle. <laughs> and obviously this is my real hand. <laughs> Terry, this is, in terms of first cosplays ever, like, are you a designer? Are you, are you a builder? What's, what's your history? I'm a biotech engineer and an IT guy. So. I'm an IT guy, I can't build this stuff, this is insane! <laughs> I learned it all on YouTube, um, forums, uh, help from some other cosplayers uh, that I contacted on Facebook, but yeah. It's awesome, thank you so much for talking to us and please don't step on me. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Who we actually got inside all of this armour? Uh, my name is Greg Conroy. It's, it's incredible armour. Can you tell me what is it actually made out of? Well, predominantly it's uh, the plastic from the uh, those plastic flexi tubs you get from Bunnings, that's my main material. <laughs> It's pretty good. You can heat it. You can you can screw it together like real armor, and it's nice and light. Right. And and what like what's the the hammer made out of? Because that that is that is dangerous looking stuff. Well, predominantly it's made from a, a toy hammer, which is a small bit inside. But uh, the end part is mostly just uh, cardboard gift boxes. <laughs> and how many times have you ever marched in the parade before? I think I've been to every single one. Oh wow. Okay, that's awesome. Have you always been a dwarf? No. And I'm sorry, that's a really personal question, I know. <laughs> no, I was a dwarf. I was a different dwarf last year, but I've done Terminators, uh, Orcs, uh, Dementor puppets. Uh, yeah, I've done Dementor puppets? Yeah, I had a Dementor puppet on the front, and he was floating in the front, yeah. That's awesome. And also, I, I think something that really freaks me out about you is the nose. You've got a, a really impressive dwarfish nose. Well, I can't take credit for this. I've got this uh, wetter. I had the privilege of Weta making me up as a dwarf at Supernova a, a year or so ago, and they let me keep the nose. Oh. And uh, it is it is a main focus. It is a, a favourite part of the costume is the nose that makes it. It's just so pockmarked and and it, up close, it's really terrifying. We are here with Peter Capaldi. Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Lovely having you in Australia. Now. I know that you were a fan of Doctor Who well before you became a part of the yeah. universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually heard a rumour that you had quite an autograph collection. Can you tell me about yeah. that? Oh, you know, when I was a kid, I, 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 I loved Doctor Who. I sort of grew up with Doctor Who because it started when I was about five. Yeah. Um, so those first four Doctors mm. kind of took me through my you know, childhood and adolescence and then you know, by the time you reach a certain age, you know, you sort of grow out of it and you leave it all behind. So, so Tom Baker's kind of the last doc that I really sort of was uh, uh, into. Um, but yeah, I had all of their autographs. I wrote to the BBC and got the, and they all sent me their uh, autographs, which I kept. Uh, but unfortunately, I got rid of them all oh at, no. at, at a later age because I didn't want to be a geek anymore. So I threw well, all these things away. Well, welcome back to the geek Welcome community. back to the geek world. I came back big time. <laughs> We're so happy to have you back. Now, when you heard that Doctor Who was rebooting yeah. as someone who had been a fan previously, yeah. what were you, your feelings towards that? Um, I, well, you mean when it came back originally? Originally, yeah. Uh, I, I thought that was great. I thought it was really interesting. I thought Chris Eccleston was fantastic. Uh, and I was so pleased that this show had retained the elements that, uh, that I loved about it and that we were all familiar with it. But it also had this new lease of life, which was great. I thought Billy Piper was amazing um, as Rose. And I think it was just a, it was a really clever and brave thing to do. I mean, I think a lot of people don't 
and realize how courageous it was of uh, Christopher Eccleston. Absolutely. Who, you know, is a, a very celebrated and respected actor mm. to take on that role. Yeah. Because it could have been a disaster. It could have all gone down the tubes, but it didn't. It Thanks didn't. largely to him. Absolutely. Now, every doctor, I find, brings something new to the role uh -huh. um, and something of themselves almost. Yeah. You've done a lot of roles in the past. Are yeah. there any characters from the past that influenced your portrayal of the doctor? Not really. I mean, I think uh, uh, I, I just try to make him as much like me as, as possible, apart from the, the, the brains and the heroism. I don't, <laughs> I'm neither courageous nor very clever. Um, but I think uh, he's quite... Uh, Light-hearted, but also a little bit melancholic. He's uh, he's uh, uh, he has to be alien. He has to be. I mean, I wanted him to be uh, uh, much as I loved uh, David and Matt and, and all of, the, of those doctors. I found that I, I, I wanted my doctor to be slightly more distant okay. and slightly more uh, uh, clearly from another place, yes. not from Earth. Yeah. Uh, so that was the kind of direction I wanted to go in. Okay, and how do you strike that balance between being very alien and not quite human, but still having a, an element of relatability? Well, I think what you try to do is to see a bigger picture. So I try to, the, the trouble when you play the doctor is the doctor has knowledge. Mm -hmm. The doctor knows more than anybody else in the room. And I don't mean just in terms of the fact of him being cleverer than everybody else in the room. He actually knows what's going to happen. He knows uh, about time, mm -hmm. and he knows the future and the past, and he knows and can interpret um, the ripples and eddies in time mm -hmm. uh, that, 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 that other beings uh, don't see or feel. So um, you have to be in touch with that. You have to be in touch with uh, an, uh, another uh, uh, perspective of consciousness. It all sounds very hippie-ish, doesn't it? No, <laughs> I think that's kind of what the Doctor is all about, Do though, on, on another level. I think so. I think they're not really, he's not really human. The, 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 the human thing is just a, a trick. Yes. Uh, and I think that's the, that's the difficult thing about her, is that you have to be a sort of relatable human character. Mm. But when you're, you're not human. You're not human at all. Yeah. At all. Absolutely. Now, the Doctor isn't your first uh, foray into the Doctor Who universe. You yeah. played a role on Doctor Who yeah. as well as Torchwood. Yeah. Um, how do they all connect? Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the thing was I was very excited to be... Uh, I never thought I would ever play Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. uh, and I didn't walk around every day going, oh, I wish it was Doctor Who. Mm. People seem to think that's... Or the press like to think that's what, what I did, but that wasn't the case. I was just going on with my life and I was enjoying the show when it came back. Uh, and loved David in the, in the role, uh, and uh, and then I got a call from uh, uh, Russell T. Davis, who I'd never worked with before, but who, who who I admired, and said, "Would you like to be in this episode of Doctor Who?" I said, "Of course, yes," without reading the script or anything. <laughs> because, I just, I <laughs> of thought, course. because I thought that was the only time I would be in Doctor Who, so I played that character called Cacilius mm -hmm. uh, in um, the Fires of Pompeii. Fires of Pompeii, and then the following uh, year. Um, I was on holiday and Russell rang again and said, would you like, to, I'm doing this Torchwood thing, would you like to be in that? And I said, yeah, and I, and I remember I said at the time, but how do we, how is this, I'm the same, I've got the same face as that character, this is the same universe. And he said, oh, I he said, I don't know, maybe there's an Eddie in time or something like that, maybe the character in Torchwood is related to the character in, in Pompeii, I don't know. Um, and, uh, but there wasn't any, there was no reason to connect them. Okay. Uh, and there was no reason to connect the Doctor to Caecilius mm. until they cast me as Doctor Who. Yes. Uh, and even then there was no particular reason to do it. I think they just thought it was fun yes. to see why uh, I had the same thing. The funny thing is when you see the episode where, where, where I remember who I was mm -hmm. or who, where I got the face from, I look completely different. <laughs> I mean, I look like two different actors. It's really bizarre. Wow, it, it means that you're doing an excellent job of getting into character. I think it just means I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us here at Supernova. It's my pleasure. We love having you. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. It's great to be here.